Hello friends, welcome to my channel and explore the world of Microsoft Azure. My name is Rajneesh Kaushik and I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer, Consultant and an Enterprise Architect. For more latest videos and blogs, you can always log into my website rajneeshkaushik.com and subscribe to my blog. Please do not forget to subscribe my channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss the latest videos. Do like, share and comment. Databricks has recently launched a brand new feature called Liquid Clustering for Delta Lakes. Uh, this is a game changing feature. Uh, this not only just simplifies your data decisions but also supercharge your queries and optimize these queries. So let's dwell deeper into this new feature. So let's get started. Liquid Clustering 1 on 1 What every Databricks developer should know. Here is agenda. First, we are going to discuss what is Databricks liquid clustering and how it works. Then we will understand the benefit of using liquid clustering for Delta tables. Uh, we will dwell deeper into the use cases and examples. Then we will understand the comparison of this uh, clustering method versus other clustering methods. And then how do we implement this brand new feature in Delta tables. Then we will learn about how do we choose the clustering keys and what is the role level concurrency on Databricks and how Databricks clustering helps us to achieve that. Then we will understand how do we write data to the cluster tables and then trigger the clustering for existing tables. Then we will understand reading and viewing this uh, clustering information and finally we will wrap up the session with the limitations of the uh, clustering, liquid clustering and the final conclusion. Introduction to Databricks Liquid Clustering. So what is Liquid Clustering actually? It's a brand new feature in the Databricks Runtime 13.2 on, onward. And how does it help? It helps to uh, replace the existing Z order or table level partitioning feature. And, and for those of you who don't know Z order, Z order is a data skipping method which helps you to co-locate the data which, which is going to be searched together in the same location so that the data brick can read the data in a co-located way and it can optimize the performance. So that was the Delta Lake feature uh, which still works but this feature liquid clustering is a brand new feature which actually replaces this table level partitioning and Z order and because it is more efficient than these two features. It, how does it help? Because it aims to simplify the data layout decisions which means that if data is co-located and if uh, you understand that data access patterns and if you can co-locate the data in the same area then you can read it in a more optimized fashion so that is why this feature helps you to achieve that and eventually when you co-locate your data in a uh, place which where it is easy to access then it optim optimize the query performance and this is how this uh, whenever your analytic requirement keep on changing Suppose initially when you thought about the table creation, you provided a uh, key and then as and when the data is more, uh, the more data is coming, you thought like, okay, this key may not work, you may have to add another key. And as and when your uh, analytics requirement keep on changing, the access pattern also keep on changing. So that keys which you have initially thought about may not work appropriately. So in that case, um, if your data layout evolves with your analytic requirements, only liquid clustering can help you to overcome those kind of problems. How does liquid clustering work? So let's understand that. Uh, actually liquid clustering replaces the traditional methods of table partitioning and Z order. And how does it work? It actually provides a um, flexibility so that it can change the clustering keys without actually rewriting the entire data set in that hard disk. So because as and when your analytic requirement changes, your data layout automatically evolves. And that evolving uh, data layout need to be accommodated for the when you do fire a query. So that is what the liquid clustering does. It, it is a more flexible approach for uh, putting your data layout and making sure that data is in a proper location and it can be accessed. It helps you to ensure the faster and more efficient queries. 
uh, why where this particular uh, clustering approach is beneficial wherever you have a high cardinality columns or you have a significant data skew data skew is a uh, problem where your data is skewed in a certain place like suppose you are firing a query and your data is um, skewed towards a specific month where the transactions are more versus uh, month where the transactions are less so most of the time you might have seen that you have more transactions happening in the month of um, december uh, because it is a christmas holidays so that is why uh, your partition which when you do the partition on the monthly basis the data is more skewed towards the uh, december partition so that is what the significant data distribution skew happens or a rapid data growth is happening on a certain partition so that is where this particular liquid clustering uh, helps to overcome those limitations what are the benefits of liquid clustering for data tables so liquid clustering clustering helps in four different ways first of all it is it provides a flexibility in the data layout that means it allows you to redefine your clustering keys without actually rewriting the overall data set it helps you to optimize the query performance because your data layout is very optimized and that way whenever you fire a query in the um, new data layout uh, it ensures the faster retrieval of the data it helps to enhance the concurrency so databricks uh, actually provides a enhanced concurrency that means uh, you can concurrently read or write the data with the liquid clustering uh, and it helps you to evolve the data layout as and when your analytic needs are changing or evolving immediately the the way your analytic needs are evolving the data layout automatically changes and based on that new data layout the queries are being fired and that is how it really helps so what are the use cases and examples of using the liquid clustering first of all whenever you create any delta table it is recommended to use the liquid clustering now onward especially after databricks runtime 13.2 onward and what are the other use cases and examples wherever you are seeing that frequent filtering is happening in the delta table whenever you see that significant data distribution skew is happening whenever you see that there is a rapid growth of data that time you can use it whenever you feel that there is a changing access pattern or there are partition keys which where the partition keys are keep on changing tables where typical partition key results in too many or too few partitions in that case this is very very optimal process tables with concurrent write requirement where tables are con there are concurrent writes are happening in the table by multiple processes that time this could be the best option so let's compare the liquid clustering with other clustering methods because as you know that it provides more flexibility than high style uh, table partitioning and z order indexing so um, whenever you have a convert you want to convert from the existing partition to the liquid clustering these are the thumb rules first of all if you have a partition column which was there use this this part existing partition column as a clustering key whenever you are doing the hive style partitioning or or whenever you are using z order by column or for z order indexing that you need to use as a clustering key so this is the current optimization technique and this is a recommended optimization technique in current optimization technique if you have a high style hive style partitioning then you will use the partition that same partition column as a clustering key in the liquid clustering if you have a z order indexing then you will use the same as a clustering key if you are using high style partitioning and z order both then you will use both partition column and z order by column as the clustering key and if you are using a generated column to reduce cardinality that means uh, date for a time stamp is a generated column so in that case what you will use you will use the original column as a clustering key and don't create a generated column which means you are going to use the time stamp as a uh, clustering key instead of using a generated key so this is a comparison with the other clustering method so you might be thinking about okay enough of the theory how do i implement it so it is very easy to implement it there is a cluster by cl clause and with the cluster by clause you can implement it for example if you are creating a table and then table has two columns and when you say using delta cluster by and then the column name so that means you are using a liquid clustering uh, similarly if you are creating a table in the ctas statement 
and in that CTS statement if you say um, cluster by column name that means it is you are specifying the um, you know clustering key or in the liquid clustering or if you are trying to create a uh, table and that table is you know you are creating a table and then you want to uh, you know create a table from the another table and that way it will also create a same clustering key which you have created in the table one so table one clustering key is here the same clustering key will be created here and similarly if you want to alter the clustering key then you can say alter table cluster by and then key name and if you want to disable the clustering key then you can say alter table and cluster by none so these are the options to implement the cluster by clause or liquid clustering now we need to remember that if you once create a cluster key you need to make sure that you create a job to optimize the uh, keep on creating the cluster key why because this is this is one of the implementation where you need to run the optimized job constantly on the table so that you know it can incrementally cluster the data based on the key which you have specified so if you um, usually what people do people uh, create an optimized job and then the job is running after every couple of hours so that that job will automatically um, you know uh, locate the data and put it in a proper place okay so how you might be thinking that if you want to create a table how do you choose the clustering key so this is there is a thumb rule for choosing the clustering key because clustering key is very much crucial for maximizing the query performance so the thumb rule is that you you always choose a key based on the commonly used query filters the commonly used query filters you choose the same key and if you already have existing table so for the existing table if you are using a partitioning column right or you are using a z order by column then you use the same clustering key whatever is a partitioning column is there or z order by column is there row level concurrency on data bricks so whenever you create a clustered table what are the benefits the one of the benefit is that it reduces the conflict between the concurrent write operations so if there are two write operations happening on the same table at the same time which is called concurrency it actually helps you to reduce the conflicts and this is how once the conflicts are reduced it helps you to enhance the efficiency of the operations like optimize insert merge update and delete so this is how the row level concurrency is achieved with the help of clustering so you might be uh, thinking about how do you write the data to the cluster table so it is very easy uh, if you are using databricks runtime 13.2 and above or you can use a delta writer client which is compatible with delta write protocol and that will help you to write the data on the cluster table which is the liquid cl liquid cluster is enabled now some operations like insert into or ctas statement automatically cluster the data on the right so suppose insert into or ctas or copy into from parquet file or spark dot write dot format delta dot mode append so these statements actually automatically cluster the data you don't have to do anything it is because the uh, tables are already clustered by the liquid clustering key and whenever you run optimized method uh, optimize table name that helps you to efficiently um, you know do the uh, clustering efficiently on the existing table how do i trigger clustering for the existing tables where the uh, clustering is enabled so what you can do you can use the optimize command to trigger the clustering because just um, making the clustering key uh, does not automatically trigger so you have to op you know run the optimize command and liquid clustering is auto a incremental process so data is only rewritten when it is necessary so what you can do you can say optimize table name and you can run this in a job and schedule this job regular interval so that you will get a best performance of the liquid clustering okay so now we understood how do we write the data but then how do we read the data reading is also very easy and simple uh, for reading you can use any delta lake uh, client which supports the reading or deletion vectors 
um, and whenever you read a data you need to specify the clustering key in your query like in this example it is select star from table name where cluster key column name equal to the value so this example helps you to um, you know read the data with the help of clustering key liquid cluster how do we view the clustering information from an existing table where the clustering key is enabled it's very simple as you know all the uh, viewing information is with the describe command and uh, this is this actually provides you how the clustering key is clustering is enabled on a table this is an example describe table suppose the order detail table is there or describe detail about the customer table so that way you will see that what are the keys which is specified for the liquid clustering what are the limitations and considerations for uh, clustering key first of all uh, even though liquid clustering is a answer for all your performance problems but it comes with some uh, limitations so what are those limitations uh, only columns with collected statistics can be specified as a clustering key because all this game works on the basis of statistics which is collected from the data if there is no collected statistics then the clustering key will not work because based on the statistics only it takes the decision where to co-locate the data so that is why it will not work if you don't have a collected statistics there are maximum of four columns as a clustering key which you can enable and structure streaming workload does not support the clustering key uh, or the liquid clustering and they uh, do not support the clustering while on writing it because um, this is uh, because at the time of writing you know streaming data is very fast and the decision to write it in a proper way a proper place cannot be taken so these are the three limitations of uh, liquid cluster so with this we can conclude that the this is a transformative technique in the big data analytics it simplifies the data layout decisions and optimizes the query performance and it also helps you to ensure the efficient processing and analysis of a vast data sets. Um, this is a very pivotal technique for actionable, uh, deriving the actionable insights from the data. Thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't